Hello and welcome to the 3D Printing Canada CR10S Pro build video. Let's begin the unboxing process. It's pretty straightforward here. We have a spool of filament, we have a box full of accessories and parts, an instruction manual, and then we have the printer itself. Take your time and go carefully when you're unpacking the foam from the printer because there's lots of little cables that could get nicked and caught in the process. To get the foam from underneath the bed, you're gonna to have to break it up a little bit. Typical of all Creality printers, all the accessories and parts needed are meticulously bagged and organized for you. We are given a bag of accessories, including an SD card and a feeler gauge, a power cable, a USB cable, a spool holder assembly, a spludger for getting prints off the bed, a piece of Capricorn tubing, a spool of filament, and a bag of parts and accessories. In that bag, you'll find T-nuts, some screws, a pneumatic fitting, an extra nozzle, and the spool holder nut. Also included is a basic toolkit with wrenches, Allen keys, clips, a screwdriver, and a piece of wire to help you clean the nozzle. Finally, we have our instruction booklet, which you can use in conjunction with this video to assemble the printer. As for the printer itself, it comes in two parts, including the base and the gantry. Let's begin by removing the piece of tape holding the Z-axis motor wires in place. There's one on each side. Out of the box, the Z-axis comes with the X-axis gantry fairly low, and we want it higher. So, take your fingers and move the lead screws at the back of the gantry until the X-axis gantry is about halfway up the Z-axis. The next step is to mount the Z-axis to the base. Using a piece of foam that was holding the bed in place, we're going to put it on the side and then carefully mount the printer on the foam and turn it over. Doing this will ensure that the printer will not get scratched during this process. Carefully take the gantry and line it up with the four holes in the base. It's important during this step to make sure that the Z-axis motors aren't crushing the Z-axis motor wires. The kit comes with four black screws and you can find the Allen key for them in the toolkit. Using the Allen key, take the screw and push it through the first hole until you see the screw emerge from the top of the base. Then you can line up the gantry with that screw and screw it in lightly. Again, make sure that that Z-axis motor wire is not being crushed under the Z-axis motor. Once you are satisfied with the alignment, you can screw in the other screw. Repeat the same steps for the other side of the gantry. The CR10S Pro comes with a very neat and tidy cable assembly that plugs into the side of the X-axis gantry. Ensure that your cable isn't kinked or twisted, and then insert it into the plug, pressing firmly. After pressing it in, make sure you squeeze the two clips on either side to hold it in place. At this point, the main assembly is complete. Now to plug in some wires. Very slowly and carefully, rock your bed back and forth and make sure no wires are being caught. If they are, you can push them into the holes a little bit deeper. There, that's much better. Gather all parts required for assembling the spool holder, including the spool holder, the bracket, the nut, and the T-nuts. Take one of the screws and push it through the bracket, holding it in with the Allen key. Then thread on one of your T-nuts. Remember, we want the squared off part of the T-nuts facing the spool holder. Repeat for the other side. On top of the printer, align the T-nuts with the channel of the V-slot and then insert it in. Take your Allen key and turn until the T-nuts catch and hold the spool holder in place. Next, mount your spool holder using the nut. Next, we want to do a check to make sure that the nozzle is an even distance from the bed on both sides of the bed. 
We can do this by very carefully manually lowering the x-axis down the Z gantry. Lower it until you can see the nozzle about two millimeters off the top of the bed. Next, take your X gantry and very slowly move it from side to side. Observe the distance of the nozzle from the bed. Does it stay two millimeters? Does it start to close the gap more on one side? If so, you'd need to make an adjustment by adjusting just the one lead screw. In this case, it looks like we're pretty even on both sides, so I'm not gonna touch anything here. The next step in this process involves gapping the nozzle for calibration. Manually move your axis up again until it's about 10 millimeters off the bed. Included with the printer is a gapping tool that's about one and a half millimeters thick. Put that under the nozzle and then turn the nozzle down until it hits this tool. Then you can remove the tool. Let's plug the printer in and then turn on the power switch. If all is good, you should see the Creality splash screen and it will load into the user interface. Sometimes from the factory, the cr 10 Pro can come set with the probing distance too small, so the nozzle may have a chance of hitting the bed. To mitigate this, we're going to increase the signal strength of the probe. If you look on the probe, you'll see a screw, or you'll see some silicone that is covering the screw right near the LED of the probe. In this case, we have silicone, so we're going to take our screwdriver and very carefully scrape it off. Remember a couple steps ago when we gapped our nozzle? That was so that we could set this distance properly. Take your screwdriver, slot it into the screw, and start turning clockwise until you see the LED light up. There. Once you see it light up, turn it back and then turn it forward again until you see it light up again. In preparation for printing, go to Temperature, Manual, and then you can set the temperature of both the bed and the nozzle manually. Set the bed to 60, and then set the nozzle to 180 degrees. If successful, you will see the values reflected on the home screen. Once things have heated up, it's time to set the Z offset. Go to Settings, and then go to Leveling you should see the printer home itself. Once homing is complete, in the leveling menu, click Z Home. You will see the printer sense the bed a few times and then it will finally settle in and stop moving. Next, we're gonna take our small 0.2 millimeter feeler gauge and use that to gap the nozzle. Put it underneath the nozzle. Start pressing the Z minus button under Z home. You should see the gantry slowly start to come down. Keep pressing and keep pressing until it comes down enough for the nozzle to touch the feeler gauge. After making contact, remove the feeler gauge and press Z home a final time. This will save the setting. If all goes well, the printer should home again and then finally come to rest at the distance you set it to. It's always good to re-verify this with the feeler gauge after you're done setting the offset. After setting the offset, now we can measure the bed and create a grid. Press the measuring button and it will go through and auto home and level the whole bed. Now it's time to load the filament. Go to the Move menu and then raise the Z axis. Here we're going to raise it to about 60 millimeters. After raising the axis, it's time to raise our temperatures for the hot end. Go to Temp, Manual, and then raise the temperature to about 210 for PLA. You should watch the temperature rise up to 210. After loading your filament onto the spool, take a strand and then take your clippers and cut it at a 45 degree angle. 
To make sure we're successful here, we're going to take some of the natural bend out of the filament. So take the end and then very slightly curve it so that it becomes straight. Next, you can insert it into the filament sensor and then through into the extruder. Press the extruder arm and the filament should come in nicely. Now your job is to simply push the filament in until you encounter some resistance. At that point, you should start seeing filament come out of the nozzle. To make sure the filament doesn't leak everywhere, you can take some of the pressure off by pressing on the extruder arm and then pulling on the filament by about two millimeters or so. Remove the excess filament. The most popular upgrade for the CR Tennis Pro is a combination of Creality Glass and Magigoo. Magigoo is a special substance formulated to hold prints on while the print bed is hot and then release them when it cools down. It is water soluble and one application of Magigoo can last you many prints. We have found Creality Glass to be exceptionally flat and precise. On one side of the glass, you have a matte, textured surface that can hold on to prints. On the other side, we have pure, clean, flat glass, which is what we're going to be using today in conjunction with the Magigoo. To install the glass plate, simply remove the two front clips holding in the original aluminum plate. Once they are delatched, you can remove the plate easily. Then simply take the Creality glass and put it back into place. We're putting it with the matte side down, shiny side up. Applying the Magic Goo is easy. Take your bottle and give it a nice shake. Then remove the cap and using the foam roller, simply apply a very thin layer. During this process, very little to no squeezing should be required. If you're squeezing, chances are too much is going to come out. One thing to note here is that you want to apply the Magic Goo when it's cold. This way, all the Magic Goo in the foam roller of the device is not going to dry out. To use your CR Tennis Pro with Cura, go Settings, Printer, and then go Add Printer. Under Add a non-networked printer, go to Other, and then scroll down to where it says CR10, and select that. Add that profile. To make this profile compatible with the CR Tennis Pro, go to Manage Printers, Machine Settings, and then under the line that says G28, insert a G29 line. This is for auto bed leveling. Once you close the menus, you can drag and drop the model of your choice into the build area. You can click and drag around to get a better view of the model. Click the slice button and the computer will calculate all the movements needed for the printer. You can see this in the preview tab. Then click save to file and it will save it to your SD card. 